In today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix 404 errors on your WordPress website. So this is the website we'll be working with. I just created it this, this for this demonstration. It's a website I created with the Astra theme, which we make, and also starter templates, which we make. What that means for you is that if you're just starting our website, you can get this template and hundreds of other templates for free. Links are in the description if you want to check it out. So this is how the template or the website looks like. But if you look at the 404 page, which you'll be concerned with, it actually looks like this. So if you already have an existing website, this is what we're going to fix. And this might look completely different depending on what your website is. So let's start the process and I'll show you step by step how to fix these errors. So before you start actually resolving 404 errors on your website, you need to actually find the information or you need to find the URLs that are throwing or causing 404 errors on your website. Now, there are multiple ways to do it. You can find the data inside Google Search Console, but I'm going to give you the best method that I think you should be using on your website. So inside my website or the magical world of WordPress, we have the plugin section open. And as you can see, I have searched for a plugin called Redirection, which is the plugin I'm going to recommend and demonstrate the entire process with. And as you can see, I already have it installed. Now, I personally recommend this plugin because of its extensive feature set and it's completely free to use, but you can use your SEO plugins as well, because many of these, or I'll say, most SEO plugins have some sort of redirection capability or fixing 404 and capturing 404 capability. What I know of is that uh, Yoast SEO Premium does offer redirection facility. Rank Math offers this natively, but I prefer using redirection because of its extensive feature set, which I'll demonstrate. So now you have uh, installed the plugin. If you're following along, you should install this plugin. And then once you have installed this plugin, this plugin, once you activate it, once you configure it, what it will do is start collecting all the URLs that are throwing 404 errors on your website. What do I mean by that? Let me demonstrate. Just give me a second. Let me open up the right page. So this is the plugins uh, interface, right? I can go into tools. I go into the redirection plugin. And technically, this plugin uh, helps with redirection, but it also helps with capturing 404 pages. So if you go into the 404 section, which is enabled, I have enabled it, you'll see all the errors that or all the URLs that are throwing 404 errors on my website. Now you can see this, these are just manufactured errors or I caused these errors, but a simple way to filter these is just go into the grouping section, group by URL, and I'll apply. And then you see, you have two different URLs, which I caused or created as 404 errors, but you have counts as well. So how many times are these errors occurring on this website? So depending on the kind of website you have, depending on how big your website is, how much content you have, how much traffic you get, you might see a lot of different errors here. And the beautiful part about this is you can actually filter or say sort these errors based on the source URL and also on the count. So let's say you have a very important URL you want to fix and you can see if how many people or how much how many times it's being accessed or how many times people are trying to access it. So you can prioritize which errors to fix first. So this is uh, where the power of redirection or this plugin comes into play. It collects 404 errors for you as well. So now we have the data for 404 error. You can find this in search console. You can find it through 404 error or 404, um, the 404 error section in this plugin. Now we want to fix it. And the solution to fix 404 errors is always simple answer, redirection. Now, if you don't know what redirection is, it's a very simple process. Just think of it like this. Uh, your website visitor wants to access a certain page, but you tell them, okay, don't go to this page, go to this page instead. In essence, that's the simplest way. So what we're going to do, since we already have the data on which pages users are trying to access, which do not exist because of 404 errors, we're going to uh, redirect them to a certain page on a website or even external URLs, depending on how you want to set it up. So. Now, if you already have the data for 404 errors, I'm going to show you the process as well. But if you are using or fixing 404 errors, you'll start seeing 404 errors right here inside the plugin. And what you can do, you can see the option right here. I'm here. And if I, when I'm hovering over the specific URL, which is causing the 404 error, I see add redirect option. And this is the option uh, we need to use to add a redirect for this URL so that we can redirect the user to some other page on our website. So I'm going to click the button called add redirect. And this will open up this uh, pop-up menu. Now this shows you the source URL, which says this won't work, which is the actual URL. And you also have the query parameters. And now this is not, uh, or I say this is a more complex feature. I'm not gonna go into details for this one. And what you simply have to do is enter, this field is automatically filled in for you. You just have to fill in the target URL. So where do you want your users or visitors to go? when they try to access this particular URL. So now this can be a URL on your website, but this can be an external URL as well. So let me fill in these details or let me try to uh, fill in this detail with our personal website, which is astra or wpastra.com. Just give me a second. Right, so I've now added the redirection or added the target URL. Let's add the redirect. 
and the redirect is now added. Let's check it out in the redirect section. So now we see this redirect is already added on our site. Now what this means is that if somebody tries to access this URL on our website, they'll be actually taken to wpastra.com. And one of the interesting features about this plugin is that you can check the redirect without having to open the page, which is the option right here. So what you can do is just uh, if you want to check redirects quickly, you can use this option. But since I already have the page open right now, this is not refreshed. I'll show you the URL right here. So this was the page that was throwing the 404 error, but now we have fixed it by creating a redirect. So if I duplicate this page, this instantly takes me to wpastra.com, which means the redirection is now working and the 404 error has now been fixed for me. So this is the first method. I said this is the most easiest way to fix redirects. Now, if you don't already have data being collected inside your redirection plugin, let's say you find out some URLs from your uh, search console which needs to be redirected or 404 errors that you need to fix. You can also do that definitely. For that, you'll have to use the add new redirection feature, which is present right here because you don't have the data or you're fetching the URL from some other place. So how do you fill in this information? It's very simple. It's very similar to what we already did. You have to fill in the source URL yourself because it's not coming from the plugin. You have to choose uh, multiple options. Now, this is again a little bit more technical or, or more advanced. For most use cases, you don't need to worry about this. What you need to do is fill in the source information or source URL, which has to be relative. I'll explain what that means and then fill in the target URL. So let's go right here. Let's fill in the source URL, which you will get from your source search console. So let's say I have a relative URL such like this. So this is what I filled in for the source URL. And as you can see, it's a relative URL. That means I ha don't have, or I haven't added my domain name in front of it. I just have the actual part of the URL that has to be redirected. So this is what you need to do if you export data from Search Console. You have to make sure that you don't enter the domain name in the source part, but for the target URL, you want to enter the complete URL. So let's take this uh, same example. Let's create the redirect for wpastra.com once again, and then I'll create this redirect. And now you have this one I already created, this I created last time, but now this is also created. So now if I try to access this URL, which I can do right uh, just by opening this URL right here, I should be taken to wpastra.com. And as expected, we are now landing on wpastra.com. That means the redirect is now fixed. So now I hope you understand how to fix 404 errors on your website. But there's one important thing that I'd like to address. Just give me a couple of minutes so that I can give you some perspective on when to do this, not how to do it, when to do this. Because you technically don't need to fix all 404 errors on your website. I've seen a lot of people uh, panicking about getting 404 errors, but you don't need to worry about it. First of all, it's a natural part of the web. Uh, 404 errors actually help Google in understanding what pages are important. And the third and most important part, having 404 errors on your website does not mean or will not, or Google will not punish you for having 404 errors. Even if, uh, even though they're reported in Search Console, Google has come out and said multiple times that they will not punish your website in the search results if you have some 404 errors. So you need to ask yourself this question uh, whenever you try to do, do this or whenever you're trying to fix a 404 error is the question you should ask yourself is, should I fix this 404 error or do I need to fix this 404 error? So 404 errors should be fixed when there is an appropriate replacement for the content that you are redirecting from. For example, let's say you have a page about an uh, event that happened in 2020, right? Let's, let's forget about COVID-19 altogether. Let's say you have an event in uh, 2020 and now you are conducting a similar event in 2021. So you create a new page and 2020 or the page that you created for the 2020 event is now out of date. So you want, or you can delete that page and then redirect all the people trying to get to that page to the 2021 page. But let's say, for example, you have a product page on a website for a product that is completely discontinued. Then there is no appropriate uh, page that you can redirect your users on. So for that particular page, it's okay for you to just leave it the 404 error as it is and let Google figure out if they want to actually keep showing that page in the search results or not. On most cases, what will happen is if somebody tries to access that page multiple times through Google search, Google will identify that it's a 404 error and they will de-index the page and which actually helps your website. Because if there's, there's a lot of junk pages indexed, then Google might not be able to figure out which pages are the most important pages on your website. 
So that was a quick tutorial on not only how to fix 404 errors, but also if and when you should be fixing 404 errors on your website. If you enjoyed this, learn something new, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel for daily uh, WordPress tutorials or daily WordPress content. We publish, try to publish four to five videos a week and uh, make sure you don't uh, also hit that bell icon so that you can receive notifications for future videos. Also check out some other interesting videos that I'll place on the screen. Uh, you are listening to Yuraj on Brainstorm Forces channel. I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, take care and stay safe.